Hello everyone, welcome to Scorcher Toys at AnyMoon.com's transformation guide and arm installation guide for the future Artstorm EX Gokin Garland toy as seen in the hit OVA series Megazone 2-3 or its ad adaptation Robotech The Untold Story where it's known as the Modat 5. We get this toy as presented here. If you would like to get this toy, Click the campaign link below to head on over to Big Bad Toy Store and do some shopping for Megazone 2-3. When you pull the toy out of the box, it looks like this. You're going to grab your arms, which are housed separately within the styrofoam, and you're just going to pull away to free up these connections here, and they are pegged in as they will be on the toy later. So you have to just pry them free and rotate these pieces out like so. An easy step that we can start with is grabbing one of your fixed posed hands. They look like this. This is the fist that actually works for transformation. You can see the arm ends in a ball joint. And to install, you just plug the fist onto that peg. And it takes a lot of pressure, but it'll pop into place like that. As we do this, make sure you've got your toy on a soft surface as it's very heavy and has a propensity for falling forward. What you want to do next is get a fingernail behind the visor and bring that forward. And then you're going to pinch the cowl in the back here and try to wiggle jiggle it kind of up and out. And the first few times you do this, uh, it's very stiff and... It takes quite a bit of pressure to get this done. And you don't want to scrape anything. So there it goes. So now it's popped free for me. And you can see there is uh, two pivots here, one at the base and one up above. And so what you want to do is get the cow kind of facing forward like this, push it back, and then you can open it all the way up like so. Now we want to get the front cowl open and forward and I'm going to pivot the toy forward to start this process because this piece right here is connected to the interior and is going to want to slide up with the front cowl. And so now I'm going to bring it back a little bit to free it from this front lip and then I am just going to pull up and forward and you can see that there's plenty of room. You don't need to go nuts with how far forward you pull it. If we look under the vehicle, you can see right here, there is a ball joint connection spot and that is where the arms are gonna go in. Now grab your arm and get the ball joint lined up. Now remember this vent towards the back, you're gonna grab the toy. Actually, let's, let's start bringing things down. Let's get it, we don't need it so far open. So we will bring everything kind of closing back up while well, on its way here. And then we're gonna line up the ball joint with that socket we found earlier, like so. And you just wanna put the ball where it's gonna go. And then you are going to apply pressure from above and below at the same time to get that ball into that socket. And there it goes, pops into place and your toy should look like this, and we will repeat on the other side. Now that the ball joint is connected, we can connect the arm to the toy. What you need to do to do that is make sure this flap here, there's a lip on it, is gonna go inside the front cowl, so right along this edge. So that needs to tuck inside, like so. And then moving back, we have a peg here that is going to correspond to that slot right there. And that needs to line up and we just press in firmly until it is flush with the red there. First time you do that, that is an incredibly tight fit. So you're gonna have to apply a lot of pressure to do that. If your peg is not lining up with that slot, push your nose of the vehicle in to move that cow back a little bit. That should get everything lined up. And then once you've done that, press this white section forward to really lock everything in place. At this point, you may want to put Shogo in the cockpit. So to do that, what you're going to do is take him and just rip him apart. And then take the other optional legs and plug those in. Like so. We want to bring his arms up high. That's going to help us fit him in. 
Just get him like this. Uh, he does have ball jointed arms that might pop off on you. And so get his arms up and he is ready to slide in. And if you want to put Shogo inside, now's the time to do it. Let's lift that rear cow up, which obviously swings forward quite a bit. Get the clearance you need and you're going to, okay, so these handlebars are on a pivot. So they can come up like so and they can pivot down. However you have them right now, I would press them down personally. Uh, you need to make sure Shogo's feet goes underneath the handlebars. And then if that happens, he should slide right into place. Now, if you've done like I've done, you could just bring the hands down and pretty much make him look like he's gripping the handlebars. If you are a stickler and you really want him gripping those, that's when you can use that pivot, bring it forward, push down on the hands to get everything in place. I find the hands pop out of the ball joints pretty easily and it can be a frustrating experience. And this to me looks good enough that when you close everything up, you can't really tell he's holding the handlebars or not. So that's pretty much what I would choose to do there. To close the cowl, you wanna make sure you've got these flaps open. Now this is one of the trickier aspects of putting the Uber slave back together. So I've got those panels open. We wanna bring this hinge. We wanna bring the cowl forward like so and kind of angle it down and slide it forward. And then as we bring it forward, kind of angle it back up. And that's how you get past the hump of the gray part here. Once it's in this position, you can just reach your finger in and press back and down to lock it into place. Once it is firmly back in place, you can pivot your windscreen to go right down in front of Shogo or the empty cockpit if that's what you've done. And then we can close these flaps up on either side. Next, we want to move this peg into that slot right there. And there's also a peg at the bottom that will go into this slot right here. If things aren't lined up, this interior piece can spin. It's pretty difficult to make it spin. But if it's been jostled by you, then it might not line up perfectly. So keep an eye on that. We will bring the arm in, just folding it over. And it should just peg right into place pretty firmly. And then bring your arm here. You've got a pivot at the shoulder bring that up to your desired level, bring this prong out, and your arm is in position. Here's the toy now, finally in maneuver slave mode with arms attached. To get the most enjoyment out of your toy, make sure your foot looks like this. This back heel should be as wide as you can get it in slave mode. The toe should be as forward as you can get it, and that gives you the widest base to give you the best standing position. If you don't like this interpretation of it, also make sure your kneecaps are forward, if you're not a big fan of this new torso section that's been added by Future, and not really a line art thing that you would find, you can hide that torso section by pivoting down and then rotating the legs. And then it looks much more like a traditional Garland toy. You've had your maneuver slave fun, and now you wanna to go to maneuver craft. And what you're gonna to do to begin is grab your toy. There are locks inside the inner part of the leg. They are difficult to open, but you're gonna to wanna to get a fingernail on there and really pry up. So that's what it looks like when it's open. And you'll notice right away that it moves rather freely when open. You wanna make sure you don't ram anything, including your hand with the sharp points of the knee. Once it's all the way up, close the lock and repeat on the other side. Your foot should look something like this right now. And what you want to do is grab the top part of the foot and bring it down and rotate that all the way down. And you should see the toe kind of going right into the right position. Just needs a little bit more of a press to get there. There is a little one click extension in the foot and you want it to be all the way out. So it should naturally have happened, but there you go. If it's in, no good, pull it out and then close these circles on either side and they should sit flush on either side. And if this hasn't happened already, just go ahead and knock this little cover on the top in. To recess the hand, what you wanna do is have first the tight fists on. They're the only ones that will fit in the cavity. And then just use the hand, pull up on it to get it out like this. Now, if you had your hand vertically, you wanna make sure you twist it now so that you can spin over 
that shield cover there. And then once you get here, twist it back out like so. And then you're going to want to push it up against the side here, or I guess out a little bit. And we're going to just bring it in. If it stops, it's probably just hitting the side. Should smoothly go inside. And it's going to be tight, so just press down. And there you go. Your hand should look like that. The instructions tell you now to twist the legs back and put the toy on the ground and then bring your arms straight and ratchet down and bring the forks in. So they say get into that position there. We'll repeat with the other side. And that's what they call intermediate stage one. Now we wanna open up that rear cowl. So we're gonna pop our arms open. We're gonna bring out these cavity fillers, bring up the windscreen. We are going to then, I'm gonna remove this back peg because I don't think I have the clearance for the cowl without doing so. But uh, you will, the instructions don't seem to say that you have to do that, but I don't know how you do it otherwise. So get that back peg out, hopefully without disconnecting the arm entirely. Let's see here. Again, very tight fit. And we will now pull up on that cowl. And while I do this, I'm also going to take the opportunity to remove Shogo. All right, now we are going to disconnect the tank and the seat. And what you do there is you hold the silver piece in place with one finger and press up while you press down on the red piece which is then going to allow this piece to come free and open up these flaps there. All right, make sure you've got your rear cowl tucked back behind, and then it kind of feels like you're really moving the base down more than you are pulling the uh, chest area up. And then what we wanna do is bring this piece up and this piece simultaneously comes down and it needs to rotate all the way around which is, I apologize for the hands being in the way here, but it's a lot easier said than done. And it needs to get into this position here. There are pegs underneath that come up and then leave this piece poking down. And there you go. That piece is now in the proper position. Okay, now we're going to take our toy. We're going to kind of lift up and press down on the base part of the body right along here. And we want to pivot this white piece forward. We have these pieces on either side of it. And we want to go ahead and you can pull up and out on them. So they kind of flare out like so. And then that allows you to rotate them forward and into this position here. All right, now we want to take the fuel tank area and move it up on top of the engine like so. And then we're gonna grab the front cowl holding the engine and we are going to pull it forward. So wiggle jiggle and that will pull forward like so, which is going to then enable us to push down on the front of it while lifting in the rear, which the arms being on right now is uh, gonna be an impediment. So let's try to get this all to work together here. So we're bringing this down and forward. We have clearances to watch. And if everything works out like it's supposed to, you will have enough clearance to tuck the head down and in. So from the front, you could see the piece comes up and down, up in the back, down in the front gives you room for that head to come in and you can see all the clearance I have. If you do not have this range of clearance, wiggle jiggle a little further on that cowl to make sure you do. Once you have that range of clearance, you can bring up the cowl and then bring down this visor from the back to get it to be flat in the front. To land us in intermediate stage two, whatever that really means, Let's bring our handlebars up. And then the last real step here is we've got this piece down here. We wanna bring it up and through. Our cowl, our rear cowl should be open. And then we have to bring this by so it doesn't scrape on that front there. 
bring it up and over, bring this piece. So that tab goes into that back piece right there and apply pressure until that actually happens. So there's a, a hinge there. Rawr. There it goes. Nice solid connection. And we are now in uh, which I guess you would call intermediate stage two. Looks a little bit better if you don't have arms dangling off of it. But there you go. Next we want to free up the legs and that is done. There are tabs on these gray pieces on either side of the wheel that are going into the peg. So we can just lift down or pull down, I should say, on the wheel. And there are the pegs that were attached and they are now free. So I can turn my toy around. And what I wanna do is swing the legs out of the way, first of all. And we could bring those arms out of the way as well. Again, you should probably not even have arms on the toy at this point. And then we are going to grab the wheel and bring it back and make sure you've got your little doors open in the back here. And we should be able to get that wheel to a point where it clicks. And I don't know if you heard the click because it's a pretty soft one, but there you go. Now that rear wheel is in position. Now we'll get our legs into position. And so just lift the toy by the back wheel and you will see there is a hinge that comes all the way back here. And you want that hinge forward like it is right now. And then what you wanna do is take your legs and spread them out a little bit like so. Come back around and we are just going to at the crotch pivot back. So that hinge is still forward facing, but we're bringing the crotch back. And if you haven't flared out your legs, flare them out more now, because clearly I'm about to run into the red part. So bring those legs out and they will then come up and over. And once they are over, you can close them up and if we look at the bottom of the vehicle, you'll see the crotch plate is now firmly up against that silver area. To keep that leg from moving around on us, we're gonna pull out that pin that we used earlier to make it so we could slide that leg inward. And then we are going to attach it to this hook right here. The pin has a couple little notches on it that correspond to the rail of the body. So we gotta line that up, get those notches lined up You'll see it, uh, so if you're not in the right spot, things will not slide properly. So once you get it in the right spot, you can just slide it back and it is now locked into position and we will do the same thing on the other side. Now we need to close up our rear cowl, which will lock everything into place. Before you even start this procedure, make sure your pins are still set on the, uh, the legs there. I'm gonna create a little space by pressing down here. I'm gonna bring this piece and there's that hinge behind here. So we're gonna bring that piece. We're gonna bring it kind of down like so. And then we're gonna bring our cowl over. And again, watch out for scraping back paint on the cowl. You wanna make sure there's a little bit of a gap here as you come forward. And so that looks about right. There's a gap right there. Now I wanna push my cowl back into position and you've seen that double hinge a couple times now. So there, that's in position. And then I wanna take this seat and I wanna push that so that it fills all of the cavity like so. We're very likely gonna undo a little bit of the work we just did on the next step. But what we wanna do is get the slot in this tank into that peg that you can see up ahead. And you probably are gonna to have to do a lot of finagling to make this happen, but you want to get a finger in there, a couple fingers in there, and press very firmly into place to make sure it really locks into position. But you can see it's not an easy task. Mm. There you go. So that is now firmly in place. I've got my seat in. I got to double check that my cowl is back, but everything should be locked together like so. Toy should look something like this now. Arms flared out and forward. You can rotate them around to look like this if you need to. You're gonna take this piece here and fold it down, and then you're gonna sneak it inside of the cowl like so. 
you're going to bring that wheel forward and you're going to rotate the exterior of the wheel like that so it looks like this and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side here so i'm going to fold this piece down bring it up and inside of the cowl and this is going right next to the head in there and then you need to bring it up and rotate this piece like so and you should have those vents right on the front facing you and then just apply pressure inward to get that wheel attached like so now we have a couple connection mechanisms that we're going to use here there's a peg right there there is a hook on the cowl the hooks probably up you're going to want to rotate it down and then you're going to have a slot right here and a peg in the cowl that's going to come together so I actually find this easiest to do if I have my toy upside down. So I'll bring that hook down on the other side here. I'm gonna bring my toy upside down and then I'm gonna take my arm, I'm gonna bring it flat by pressing in like so. And then I'm going to get that hook right into that peg. And after I've done that, I'm going to line up that tab and press down to get that firmly seated. There you can see the hook and the peg connected. And I'm just gonna repeat on the other side. Toy should look something like this. And what we wanna do is get the bottom all shored up. One thing you'll notice though, when you go to lift the toy is that the front end kind of sags on you. And in doing so, it might actually unpeg some of that hard work you've already done, which is super annoying. But Maybe what we're about to do will help reduce that. So turn your toy upside down and you have these flaps right here, which we haven't really done anything with up until this point. Bring this part up as far as you can and then get these pieces tucked inside the cavity there. And then press down on this piece here to try to just add a little bit more support to that front end. It's not really going to do much of anything, but can't hurt either then bring your hips and push them in as far as you can uh, just in case you've left a little bit of slop in that joint up to this point flip your toy back over make sure you've got the pegs in that cowl pressed firmly into place and again we'll try to tighten everything up as best we can and if you've got it all locked together as best as you can you should only get a little bit of droop in the front. Congratulations, you are in maneuver craft mode. If you've let that cowl droop, you've probably untabbed your, your arms. So double check those. Make sure your forks in the front are in position. They can get flared out if you bump them. If that cowl droops, again, you might get some disconnected parts throughout the main body. So make sure everything is nice and tight together here. And you might have to push together the uh, little feet balls, whatever those things are, to get them nice and tucked, get your feet symmetrical. And there you have it. Should look like this, should handle pretty decently. Check out my full review on anymoon.com. Subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.